get into consulting best practices. Um, some of them, you know, we'll see there's some overlap with, with training, uh, of course. Um, but consulting tends to be much more, uh, so if what you're delivering is much more tailored. So, you know, you, uh, you probably are focused just on one client, one company at the time versus training you do maybe for several companies. And then hopefully actually consulting is also what comes out of the training. Maybe through the training you inspired uh, some of the participants to learn more, or maybe they recognized this is where they need more help. Like they love the training, they got a lot out of it, but they have a specific need or specific problem where the training was still too, too broad and they need your individual attention uh, to help them uh, solve uh, that problem. Uh, so consulting ultimately is about providing value, right? Because you're getting paid, hopefully. <laughs> so for somebody to be ready and willing to compensate you, there has to be something you are delivering in terms of value. It could be expertise, could be content, could be ideas on how to shape behaviors, what skills to develop um, within the company, any other resources that you provide to the client. Um, but it is about moving them, shaking the status quo sometimes a little bit and moving them from point A to point B. They, they know where they want to be. They are not sure how to get there. That's where you come in as a consultant. Um, so again, we touched on the, the why of hiring a consultant. Could be just raw expertise, especially on, uh, you know, so maybe some areas of compliance that get a little bit technical. Um, you know, could be experience. You know, you want, if you are trying to put in place um, a compliance program, say in your company, but you haven't done it, you want somebody who has that experience to help guide you through the process. Um, it could be help uh, with you know, planning on specifically how to do it, or maybe training um, staff of that company on uh, the, once the new compliance program is in place, uh, you know, mentoring uh, specific staff members, or maybe working with the board on how to uh, support the process. And, you know, usually consultants, um, the greatest value of consultants sometimes is just to have a fresh set of eyes and sort of an extra jolt of motivation. Even if you're not imparting any new knowledge, even if the people in the company you work with know everything we need to know about compliance, but there's still something missing. You know, there's not, they need to be pushed across the finish line to actually get started to, to implement some of the um, concepts of a compliance program. Um, or maybe it feels like, um, you know, the champions of it within the company, maybe uh, executive director, maybe the board, uh, want help from an external um, set of eyes to examine how things are working now, what could be better, and to provide that extra motivation to actually move from just thinking about doing things or talking about doing, th doing things to actually doing things. Um, and I, right. and I, if, if I may, uh, just one quick uh, comment on the previous uh, on the previous uh, point that you just made about the fresh set of eyes. Sometimes uh, when we are involved in our uh, daily activities, we just feel sometimes the need to discuss with somebody, to get somebody else's perspective, to validate whether our approach is the right one or not. And that is when uh, sometimes uh, the, uh, the consultant can come in and uh, assess or just you know uh, act as a as a sounding board is this right is this is this what we are experienced normal have other people done it how have they done it this is what we want to do what do you think you know just you know get an, a second opinion if you like absolutely uh, agreed on that um, so then we come to the question, well, what, you know, what, what is the consultant's role? And there is always the dilemma, you know, do you give them fish or do you teach them how to fish? That is the question. And the answer maybe it depends, right? <laughs> it depends on uh, what they need at, at a particular time. But usually uh, it's healthier or it's, it's more sustainable, it's more effective 
if you are there to teach them how to fish. Uh, in other words, you know, maybe somebody, a client says, um, you know, we would like to introduce a compliance program. Uh, we don't have a code of ethics right now. We would like to have a code of ethics. Can you write a code of ethics for us? And I say, sure. Here's the code of ethics. I wrote it beautifully. It's wonderfully phrased. It uses international best practices. There, go. Did I help them? You know, maybe you know, I, I delivered something potentially of value, but what are the chances of that code uh, being delivered totally from the outside with no consultation with anybody in the company? What are the chances of people actually feeling like they own those words and they are motivated to, to live by them? Probably not, not so great. So ideally, you know, sometimes it, 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 it may be a, a wholesale product that you're delivering, but ideally you want to help people um, to facilitate their own journey in compliance and, and guide them on the way to um, coming up with their own solution. So something like a code of ethics, you would want this to be a much more involved process where you have consultations with different staff members, where you have clear leadership from um, the executive um, uh, director from the board so that uh, the chances of implementation are higher. And this, this chart kind of shows the range of, you know, how consultants may be involved. Uh, they may be this independent expert, just a fresh set of eyes that uh, may analyze the situation, may provide certain information, maybe mentor or counsel on, uh, on an issue. Um, but as, as we move to the right, the consultant's role can be much more involved from just from providing knowledge or insights or analysis to actually co-creating change. So the, a more involved step may be um, the consultant becoming a, a trainer, helping with some aspects of, of compliance training, providing feedback on how the program is implemented. Um, or, you know, they may be a sort of full, fully fledged collaborator who helps to create the program, is there at different stages of the way, um, is a proactive advisor, um, and really is, is not just advising on the change, but is sort of becoming one of the stakeholders um, in, in the, the change. And, um, uh, again, uh, just some fairly self-explanatory thoughts on uh, the consulting process. Again, many of them uh, track with how you would prepare for a training and how you would evaluate a training. So again, it always starts with the with the need. You know, I may have some things in mind that I think your company needs, um, but I need to validate that by talking to uh, hopefully a wide range of uh, people within that company. Uh, and then based on that needs assessment, you develop tailored solutions, you offer support again, it, it, it may be on different ends of the that scale that we were looking at in the previous slide. Um, you make sure that whatever you do is, is documented, um, that you have some concrete leave behind so that uh, your client has um, you know, written uh, written documentation of what uh, what you've done that they can come back to later. And of course, you want to track progress. See, uh, are the changes that you're helping the client make are they actually happening? Uh, and then report on that progress and and evaluate the effectiveness, uh, both in the short term, kind of similar to training, like was the client happy overall or not. And then sort of go much deeper into what specifically they were happy with, what didn't work um, as well, just so that you can uh, improve for the next time. And then obviously from the impact perspective, you want that follow up uh, a few months after the consulting engagement is over, just to see sort of what you know what what happened with it after you um, after your involvement ended. Um, Scoping the client's needs. Um, again, goals are always uh, the number one priority to start with. 
you need to know where you are going in order to figure out how to get there. So if consulting, every consulting essentially engagement is um, a change management exercise. The client is here, point A, they want to get here to point B. So you need to understand what that point B is <laughs> to be able to effectively um, advise them. Uh, and really take your time to um, understand the issue. And uh, now this, this can be a little bit, bit tricky um, because as consultants, you know, we come in as experts, right? It sounds like, well, we are paying us for something. So it sounds like, shouldn't we already know everything about the issue? Um, and the answer is yes, you may know a lot on, um, you know, this, this, some aspects like say, um, technical aspects of compliance, how to set up a compliance program, but you're not an expert on every single industry out there. So you may be working with a company in a sector that you've never worked with before. So there's always with each client is a lot to, there's a lot to learn upfront and a lot to understand about um, peculiarities of their sector, the specific risks that they may be taking um, or facing when it comes to anti-corruption. Um, so you have to do, you know, you, you have to do some background research, but also you learn a lot by talking to people. And that that that's where it gets tricky because you don't want to come across as not know, you know, it's like people may get a little apprehensive thinking, well, why is this consultant asking me so many questions? Like, what, what are we paying them for? Shouldn't they already know the answers? And the answer is no, not necessarily. If they are a good consultant, they will actually take the time to understand your specific company, your specific need, your specific uh, industry and situation. So don't, um, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't feel like you have, you're coming in with already made um, answers. Uh, and that also goes to help to clarify expectations. You know, the client may have something in mind that you are just, you know, it's not feasible to, to deliver for whatever reason. Um, so you need to set the boundaries of, you know, what, what are the parameters of the change we're trying to achieve here? Uh, and you have to be realistic and, and have that meeting of the mind with the client up front. Uh, because that's that's the greatest risk of any consulting project is uh, misaligned expectations where the client thinks we are getting one thing, but in your mind, you're getting something else. And then if you wait until the end to find out that that was the case, it's not going to be a, a happy um, situation. Uh, a timeline, again, that goes back to sort of expectations and being realistic about how long things may take. Uh, required resources, budget, right? I mean, you may have a figure in mind, your client may have another figure in mind. So make sure to agree ahead of time on what's mutually acceptable. Uh, you know, critical success factors, there may be some things outside of your control um, and that you need to be very clear with your client. It's like, look, I can help you with this, but then there are other risk factors that I, you know, I have no control over. So let's, let's, let's uh, be clear about uh, you know, whatever, what actions need to happen within the company itself, for instance, for, for your project to be successful. Um, and right, the level of engagement are you expected? How many hours are you expected to uh, spend on this project? You know, what's, what's, uh, what's the budget for it and, and so forth. Uh, providing well, solutions. If I, if I can uh, make just one, one quick uh, comment regarding the success factors here. If we are talking about compliance, I think one key success factor is the engagement of the leadership of the organization. In making sure that they are on board, they are okay, they are aware and they support whatever change small smaller uh, bigger change that you are working to to help them introduce um, this is one of the in my opinion this is definitely one of the biggest success factors i mean you can have a beautiful compliance program on paper but if if the leadership does not support it it will probably be poorly implemented or uh, ignored altogether absolutely that's that's a key point of so having the champion for change and knowing who they are uh, is crucial. And you need to have you know, at least some champions uh, at the board level, at the executive level. It cannot be just you know, an effort of, of uh, lower level staff that has no uh, support of the leadership. 
And so here are some examples of what um, consulting solutions you may be providing specifically in the compliance context. Those are things like identifying uh, compliance risks that again are specific to that company, to that industry. Um, and then assistance with developing a compliance framework that uh, accounts for those specific uh, risks. That, that's the uh, sort of one, one, um, compliance 101 is risk-based, right? To, in order to develop an effective compliance framework, you need to know what are the corruption risks that that particular uh, company is facing. Um, again, um, you know, maybe the company has already done it. Now they are ready to actually train their staff on the compliance framework, compliance program they have in place. Maybe they need a little help with uh, building awareness of the program. So that could be another intervention you do, training staff. Um, or, uh, or maybe testing the effectiveness of the current uh, program. So looking at you know, reviewing policies and procedures, maybe testing uh, reporting mechanisms. You know, what happens if you <laughs> call the, the hotline? Is this, does anybody pick up? Um, maybe testing, you know, how, reporting, you know, does, is the board aware that the compliance program is in place or not? If not, that's, that's a problem. And there may, may be other ideas you can explore during um, your live session, uh, but I'll let Carmen just give you a taste of a few examples that we've had from uh, past participants in uh, the COT. Thank you, Anna. Um, I would like to uh, just give a uh, um, few examples of what uh, other consultants uh, have uh, have uh, conducted in terms of uh, compliance uh, um, assi assignments. And uh, one example uh, is uh, that of uh, our colleague Grace, Grace Zhu from Kenya. Um, she, um, she has started a compliance program last year uh, with uh, 10 small companies that uh, she uh, previously um, uh, trained in business ethics. And um, what, uh, what happened is that this compliance club started at a time when um, the pandemic has already, um, has already um, come and affected these companies. And uh, Grace, who is also um, a very skilled um, uh, communications um, a trainer. Uh, she has uh, helped uh, these small companies uh, improve their digital skills in order to have access to market uh, at the time of the lockdown. And uh, in addition to these digital training skills, she coupled uh, she coupled the uh, the training with uh, sessions on uh, uh, compliance, uh, ethics, and integrity, uh, helping these uh, small companies uh, fare through the through the crisis um, and um, faced with uh, with with a significant business loss, uh, continue to operate and uh, do so in an ethical manner which I think is uh, very important, especially in, uh, in the times of a pandemic, as we have seen in, uh, or I guess, in most of our countries, if not uh, everywhere. Another example, uh, which I think is worth highlighting, is uh, that uh, of another member of the SIP um, Africa network of um, trainers in um, compliance and anti-corruption. This is um, uh, Kunle Akiode. Uh, he has worked uh, with a Sudanese organization. The um, he's uh, from Nigeria. He's a consultant with the Institute of Directors, uh, Center for uh, Go Corporate Governance. And he has um, helped um, Al Ula, the Sudanese um, Institute, uh, win an assignment for uh, a multinational company. Uh, this company wanted to uh, improve its uh, um, anti-bribery and uh, um, anti-corruption compliance systems. So um, Alula uh, contacted um, uh, Kunle and uh, he worked with another, uh, with the three members of the Alula team, helping develop a compliance uh, risk uh, assessment tool and conducting this uh, risk assessment um, in, in the company. Company, um, the custom, the client company, and then uh, develop a report with recommendations on how to address, uh, how to mitigate those uh, risks. Um, 
and the uh, assignment is still uh, in progress. And uh, another uh, example, a third example, I would like to share is from my own experience. Uh, I have uh, been working with uh, with the Women's Association, the Business and Professional Association of, Z of Zambia, and uh, my uh, assistance to them has focused on uh, helping them uh, develop a code of conduct. Uh, as Anna said, when it comes to what the consultant uh, can do, what are the types of interventions, I helped them develop the code. I did not develop the code for them, although, of course, that would have been uh, quick and easy. And uh, in addition to that, uh, I have also conducted a session on good governance and compliance with the board of the organization to get their, uh, get their buy-in, but also to uh, make sure that we are on the same page when it time when it, when it comes to uh, what uh, their goal is in terms of uh, good governance and compliance, where they want to take the organization in the in the in the future. Thank you, Anna. Great, thank you for sharing me, Carmen. Um, so back to sort of some some methods and, and how to think about uh, getting the consulting work done. You know, for multiple tools and again i'm hoping in the live session you can uh you'll be able to have um time to go into actual examples of you know if you are uh, hired to do risk assessment you know how how would you actually do it where, where would you get started we'll talk about this throughout the the training also in, in different training components uh but you can use you know there are a lot of tools out there so you don't have to reinvent the the wheel necessarily uh, you can look at the frameworks or models or, or best practices that have been used uh, either by others within the SIPE um, network or just in the consulting world um, in general. Uh, but um, again, what you use will really depend on um, that initial clarity um, on what it, if a consulting engagement is a change management project you need to have established that um, clarity up front. You know who who needs to make the change, what needs to change, why does it need to change, in what within what time frame does it need to change, you, where does the change need to happen? Is it within one specific section of the company, the whole company, uh, and then how? Uh, what are the steps? And once you establish that, then you pick from the menu of uh, consulting tools that are not unique to compliance by, by any way, so are just general tools that you uh, can apply to you know, any consulting uh, field, really. <clears throat> now let's, uh, let's say a word about best practices, or I, I like the title here, <laughs> good and bad about the best practices. Um, so what's good about uh, the so-called best practices, you know, as a consultant, that's part of your role is you impart uh, things that, you know, have been done before, that have been market tested, uh, that have been effective for other clients, either in your own experience or maybe in some case studies that you, you read, um, that are popular, you know, there may be fashionable consultants or fashionable frameworks that are in vogue right now and everybody wants to use that framework when they work on, on your problem. Um, it's great, you know, it's, it's good to be, to know them, to, to be aware. Um, and in fact, in the spirit of lifelong learning, it is your duty as a consultant to stay up to date on what those international uh, best practices uh, might be. And they do save time, right? You can just sort of adapt something that's out there to a particular situation. Um, but adapt is the key word because what happens if you have a hammer as your tool? Well, every problem, regardless of the nature of the problem, begins to look like a nail and you just want to hit it with, with your hammer. Uh, but the real world is not that uniform, right? We are not... You know, every company is different. It's not uh, like they came from the same cookie cutter. So whether a particular best practice is applicable to your specific client on this specific assignment, only you and the client uh, can uh, figure it out. And you fig how do you figure out? Again, by understanding the specific situation, by asking uh, questions to understand what, you know, what is the real need? What, what does really 
what what needs to change here uh, and then uh, the how uh, will depend on on those answers uh, so just just bear that in mind that you know you every consulting engagement is different yes you can leverage best practices yes you can leverage past experiences but um, be prepared to um, customize because ultimately that's uh, really what uh, clients are paying for, uh, tailored solutions. Uh, right, best worst practices. I love this cartoon. Just lack of lack of clarity. You know, consultant is a very fashionable word. It sounds kind of important. You know, what, what do you do? Well, I'm a consultant. Uh, but, but what do you actually do, right? So be ready to sort of spell out, you know, have some, examples of what maybe you specialize or you're particularly strong in doing um and uh, you know be be clear on the scope of work like you know <laughs> it, 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 be able to summarize what it is that you were hired to do without using the word consult <laughs> and then just as an aside uh this, this line here if they call me a consultant consultant um, in one of the sessions, we'll talk about um, you know, red flags for corruption. That's actually one of them. If you see a company that has lots of consultants, but it's not really clear what, what it is that they're doing exactly, uh, that can be a red flag that, you know, for a real job, maybe, um, you know, facilitation payments, <laughs> let's say. And if you certainly don't want to be that kind of consultant, uh, but also that's sort of the, the, the danger of the profession when it comes to um, anti-corruption. Anti um, valuable consultant skills, again, some of them are the same as being a trainer, problem solving, communication, you know, create, uh, and solving issues that may come up. Um, but there is sort of much, obviously much more emphasis on creative thinking here, just so that you are able to come up with a customized, tailored uh, solutions. Um, also in a training, it's um, fairly circumscribed who you communicate with, right? In a training session, you just communicate with the people you train. When you go to uh, a company on a consulting engagement, um, maybe your initial conversation was with the people who came to the training from that company, but you need to broaden the conversation. As Carmen said, you need to make sure that the top leadership is actually on board. If they are not, you know, nudge them. If you're nudging and they're still not on board, maybe you don't want to take that consulting assignment. Uh, but also don't limit yourself with talking just to top leadership. If you really want to understand the red flags and risks, you need to talk to people at the front lines. Sales, probably, <laughs> that's, that's a big one. So you have to be comfortable with um, uh, just building rapport and trust and having good communication skills with people at all levels in the organization, just to understand the, the nature of the, the problem. Um, and again, organization time management, that's, that's pretty much uh, the same uh, thing as with uh, training, except here, you know, the, um, the expectations part comes into play. Uh, so what, what clients expect from your time and, and for their time working with you, the, you know, the bar is uh, much higher in consulting. They want something specific. They want to feel like you really, you know, made a difference or, or delivered something that helped them change something in the company uh, for the better. And we can brainstorm more on other skills in the live session. Uh, that brings us back to our pre-recorded session. So let's, in a good good practice or best practice of uh, training, let's take a quick look um, at our session objectives again. Let's make sure we covered uh, all of them. We talked about uh, training and consulting processes. We talked about how what techniques to use to design and deliver uh, an effective training session, how to build technical skills that you can apply both in training and in consulting. Um, and uh, specifically for consulting, recognize you know, the, the, the roles that consultants can play. Um, what are the, uh, some of the key critical success factors there? I think we covered all of what we wanted to. Oh, uh, yes. And uh, <laughs> hopefully everybody feels 
uh, set and motivated to take this conversation live with Carmen. Um, in the meantime, since I think some time will pass between when you see this presentation and then when you have a session with Carmen, um, take a look at some of the resources we put here. Um, again, uh, back to extending the learning. This is one opportunity to, for us to help you extend uh, your learning. And then uh, feel free to reach out to us. Um, I won't be in the live session with Carmen, but I'll be facilitating some of the other uh, sessions. I think it's on February 9th, 8th and 9th. And then Carmen, your session is when? 22nd, on February 22nd. 22nd. Yeah. All right, so in the meantime, if you need to reach us, don't hesitate to do so. Um, Carmen, any final words? Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you all uh, in the live session. Uh, I look forward to hearing uh, from you and uh, hearing about your experiences as uh, trainers, as consultants, uh, talk about some of the good experiences you have had, some of the challenges, some of the things that uh, um, perhaps uh, we we need to discuss uh, during the live session um, any questions uh, please feel free to to send them in advance uh, i'll be happy to respond by email or we can address them during the session Thank you.